Welcome to the Digital Divide EDGE 901 Assignment 2. Session outline <coughs> includes abstract, introduction, digital divide graphs, information literacy, facing barriers, case study, students introduced, evidence, dimensions of digital literacy, internet usage age groups, households with internet use, conclusion and references. For our abstract, <coughs> Norris categorizes the digital divide into three elements. The global divide between rich and poor, the social divide between rich and poor of developed countries, and a democratic divide between those who participate online and those who do not or do not have access. This presentation will briefly compare the digital divide internationally and within Australia. Most importantly, this presentation will analyze the second digital divide within society. There will be a case study of two students completing certificate four and will highlight the digital difference between age groups and compare how they learn differently. Okay, I've put this snapshot on just to um, note the digital divide between, say, rich and poor or and, and the advantages and disadvantages they have. So for the poor ones, they will be disadvantaged, they'll have less access, they'll be more dependent, less knowledge, less priorities, more distraction. The digital divide table or the map shows Iceland as highly online and then you'll also have Ethiopia which is <coughs> very very low and hardly ever online the most and least connected countries okay so you have the least connected which will include Myanmar, Bangladesh which are like the poorer countries, Ethiopia Congo and Cambodia the most and connected, the more richer countries, which may include Finland, Denmark, the Netherlands, Sweden, and as I said before, Iceland. The next graph is actually more visual uh, with a 3D comparison of, of digital literacy, that being, you know, Iceland, Norway, Sweden being highly switched on, whereas your African countries are hardly switched on at, at all. It's more visual. You can also note Australia. Uh, reasonably highly switched on for the developed countries. Information literacy lies at the core of lifelong learning. It empowers people in all walks of life to seek, evaluate, use and create information effectively to achieve their personal, social, occupational and educational goals. It is a basic human right in a digital world and promotes social inclusion of all nations. Many living within low socioeconomic classes who lack simple dig digital literacy skills will face barriers to expand and grow within society and it's going to make it a lot more difficult for them, especially with all the services and access the internet can give you. This presentation has been filmed to incorporate a brief understanding of the digital divide within adult education. This assessment has interviewed two students within the building section and shows an age comparison with the use of digital literacy and how it affects their learning through the use of blended delivery of face-to-face, -face, online and optional, online only. How you doing? How you doing? All right. <laughs> Thanks for doing this, mate. Okay. Well, you're currently completing Certificate 4 in Building Studies. Yeah. Okay. The subject that you're doing at the moment is Manage Finances. Well, I'm going to really ask a few questions just in relation to um, your digital literacy, which means how good you are with computing. Right? So what's your full name first, mate? Ned Butler. And your age? 21. 21? Yeah. What school level did you complete? Uh, HSC, year 12. H HSC, year 12. Yeah. And what were your qualifications so far? Nothing at the moment. Have you done a trade? No. No, you haven't done a trade? So what do you do for work? General construction. General leading construction. Hand. Okay, so leading hand. Is that a family yeah, business? Yeah. Okay. Love it. Um, what's your family life like, and where where did you grow up? Uh, in Wollongong. In Wollongong. Yeah. All good. Excellent. So, what's your future aspirations? That's Have for a work, work. Work. Own a builder. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, start a big business or continue the family business? I suppose. I'll continue the family business. Okay. 
Um, do you have a phone or do you own a phone, a mobile yes. phone? What sort of mobile phone? iPhone. iPhone. Do you have any apps on it? Several. Several, yeah. And how often would you use it? The phone? Yeah. Three hours a day, four hours a day? Like 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there? Yeah, something like that, three hours. Yeah, quite a bit. All right, brilliant. Do you have a computer at home? Yeah. And how long have you had that computer at home? Or oh, sorry, can I, I'll say that again. How how long have you been using a computer for? Oh. Yeah, 10 years. Oh, okay. So you use it at school as well? Yeah. Okay, so you're pretty savvy with it? Yeah. Excellent. What type of computer is it? Uh, Mac. Yeah. And do you enjoy using the computer work for... So for this... Let, let me just explain this a bit better. This course, Manage Finances, and the subject that we've done before, Applied Building Code, did you enjoy doing the online stuff? Yes. Do you find it easier for yourself to be able to do some work at home and just completing works online? Definitely, yeah. All right. Naden? You're a good man. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Thanks, bud. All right, come on, Joel. All right. Next. Do you want to stand over here? Okay, so, 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 so Joel, you're, yes. doing, you're doing the exact same course. Yes. Um, significant Form Building Studies. Mm -hmm. And you are age... Sorry, I'll, I'll start again. Joel, your, your age is... Or Joel Gardner, your age is what, mate? 31. 31. Okay, and how was, uh, what, what level of school did you complete? Uh, almost year 11. So almost year 11? Finished year 10. Okay, and then from there, what did you do? Uh, did my landscape trade. Landscape trade? Yep. Yep. And now? And now, what are you up to now? Now I'm working construction for Mr. Stout, uh, yep. leading hand, Goblin. Okay. Yep. So high risk stuff. Yep. Okay. Um, what was your family life like? Uh, good, good upbringing. Good upbringing around the Wollongong region. Yeah, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, future aspirations. Oh, hopefully, site manager one day. Get on the big bus. Yeah. yeah. Work for yourself, possibly, no, or just work for a big builder, builder, as you prefer to do. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, I said qualifications. Okay, so do you have a mobile phone? Yes. And do you like using a mobile phone? No, not really. <laughs> no? <laughs> do you have any phone apps yeah, on I do. phone? Yeah, yeah? yeah. And how often would you use it? My mobile phone, I'll probably use max an hour. An a hour day. day. A day. Max. It, do, does it, is it in your pocket or is it in the car? It's in your pocket. It's in your pocket. Yeah. So for when you're work, at work, work... Right. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Now you have a computer at home? Yes. And how often do you use that? Not very often. When, you're, when I have to for pay. When you have to, when <laughs> I start hammering you to do work, yeah. yeah. So when... Um, uh, when you were a kid, how often did you use computers? Uh, just through school, basically, but I wasn't very good on it. And very rarely. Yeah. You weren't interested in it, were you? No, yeah, it wasn't. It's not as, not as intense as it is now through our schooling. Yeah, right, okay. All right, and then, so now you're doing the Certificate 4 and a lot of my stuff's online. Yes. Do you enjoy that? Do you prefer to be here? or? Well, I prefer to be here because yeah. I struggle on a computer at home by myself. Okay, so you prefer, say, a bit of guide sign here to help you yes. out with those things. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fine, man, that's fine. Okay, that's excellent. So that that sort of comes to my last question. Do you enjoy using the computer at home? You're oh, look, I do basic stuff at home. But yeah. yeah, but minimal. Yeah, very minimal. Joel, you're an absolute legend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, She's boys. Good on you. He's going to be stars on YouTube. <laughs> All right, with that, Dimensions of Digital Literacy from these two guys, we have three keynotes, uh, Access, Understand and Create. You can probably note that Nate and the younger one has more of an ability to produce, reproduce and create online content or form opinions and convert it to digital content, whereas it's probably a bit more difficult for Joe. And it's not his fault or, or nor Nathan's, it's just how it is with the age comparison. Uh, with this, you can note the internet usage age groups difference from Britain for 18 to 25 year olds, for 24 year olds, or compared to 25 to 34 year olds. You can see that it's slightly higher for internet usage, that being 86% for, say, Naden's group and 78% for Joel's.
Not only are there issues with the age of digital usage, but the divide is also significant with family incomes. Refer to the following graph of family incomes within the US. Note the difference with internet access for high income earners in comparison to low income earners. It'd be quite notable. Even though it's a bit maybe a bit difficult to see, you can see family income earners below five thousand dollars is thirty two percent. Whereas 150,000 or over is 95.95%. That's a massive difference, and you can see how the digital divide is making it, I suppose, as discussed, more polarised. In conclusion, this presentation has noted that technology has improved our way of life. Unfortunately, from these findings, the improvements have not benefited all of us. Many no socioeconomic families have actually been far more polarised, and the digital divide become more relevant. Naden is currently finding it more, more easier, whereas Joel prefers to come into class and do his work. These findings have found that age difference slightly makes it easier for the younger guy. A big massive thanks to Joel and Naden for their assistance in this. And the next few slides will just be highlighting the references. Thank you very much.